Welcome to our lecture online. Our next JE Advanced problem from 2021 in paper 2 deals with the resonance in the tube, the sound resonance, of course, in the tube. And at first when I read the problem, I was kind of confused. It seemed like none of information was given. I wasn't quite sure how to start on the problem. But then, of course, it's always better to go back to your fundamentals and let's, I'll show you what that is and how to go about solving a problem like this. So the problem reads, a source approaching with speed u towards the open end of a stationary pipe of length l is emitting a sound of frequency f sub s. The, far, the farther end of the pipe is closed, the speed of sound in air is v, and f sub naught is the fundamental frequency of the pipe. For which of the following combinations of u and f sub s, so the velocity of the source and the frequency of the source, will the sound reaching the pipe lead to a resonance? and they give us four combinations of u and f sub s. Now, the way to go about it is this. Let's think about resonance in a pipe. So in this case, we call that a closed pipe because one end is closed and the other end is open. So the first resonance frequency will occur like this when you have a quarter of a wavelength inside the pipe. And so we call that the resonance frequency f sub naught. On the next occasion, the next resonance frequency is when we have, let's see here, we have a, another node in there that kind of looks like this now. And you can see that this is now three quarters of a wavelength versus a quarter of a wavelength, which requires three times the initial resonance frequency to have fr uh, resonance again. And then the next occasion where you get resonance is when you end up with two of these, like this. So now it looks like that. So two extra nodes, and so now we are at five quarters, so this is one quarter of a wavelength, three quarters of a wavelength, five quarters of a wavelength, that requires five times the fundamental frequency in order to get resonance and so forth. So it's one, three, five, seven, and so forth. So those are the frequencies relative to the resonant frequency at which you can get um, a resonance inside the tube. So now we have this object, uh, let's call it a source and let's kind of make it look like this. So let's put it on wheels. It's approaching with velocity u. It's putting out a sound at a frequency f sub s. And of course, since it's approaching the tube on the open end, the frequency observed by the observer, so to speak, or in this case by the tube, is going to be different than the frequency of the source because the source is moving. So for that, we need an equation. The equation we have there is that the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times, then we have the velocity of sound and air plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound and air plus or minus the velocity of the source. Now in this case, the observer is not moving because that's the tube. And the velocity of source is u, so that means that this is equal to the frequency of the source times v divided by v plus or minus u, and now we have to decide if it's a plus or a minus. Now since the object is approaching, the source is approaching, we're going to hear a higher frequency. To get a higher frequency observed, we're going to need a smaller number in the denominator, which means we need to subtract that. And so it's v over v minus u times the source frequency will give, will give us the observed frequency. And now they give us these combinations. If we plug these combinations in for u, and f sub s, will we get an observed frequency that will either be f sub naught, 3 f sub naught, 5 f sub naught, or 7 f sub naught, 9, and so forth. And then we can say that it produces a resonance frequency. So our first case is u equals 0 0.8 v, and f sub s equals the fundamental frequency. That's case 1. That's for a, so that's for part a. And so let's plug that into this equation. So frequency observed is equal to frequency of the source times, um, oh, in this case, it's going to be frequency uh, of the, fun the fundamental frequency because we set them equal to each other. And so we get V divided by V minus U, and U is going to be 0 0.8 V. Oh, V, not 5, V. And so this is equal to f sub naught times v divided by 0.2v, which is equal to 5f sub naught. 
All right, so the frequency observed is going to be five times the fundamental frequency, which matches one of the configurations where we get a resonance, which means that, let me get my red pen out, that A is a good answer, that combination of U and F sub S will give us resonance frequency. All right, now we'll try the next combination. So for answer B, we have the combination that U equals 0.8V, and we have F sub S equals to two times the fundamental frequency. All right, so in this case, we have F observed is equal to the fundamental frequency, but notice that F sub S is now going to be twice the fundamental frequency, like this, times V divided by V minus 0.8V, because U is 0.8V, which is equal to 2 F sub naught times 0, uh, no, that's going to be um, V divided by V minus A, that's 0 0.2, that's, uh, uh, that's going to be 0, point of V's cancel out, that's going to be 5. Oop. It's the same as over here, right? V divided by 0.2 V is going to be 5. 5 times that, that's equal to 10 times the fundamental frequency. And notice, it's either 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, not 10. So therefore, that will not give you a resonance frequency. All right, two more to go. So for answer C, we have U equals 0.8 V. And the source frequency is equal to a half of the fundamental frequency. Okay, all right. So in this case, that's going to be equal to uh, frequency observed is equal to the source frequency, which is now 0.5 F sub naught. And we're going to multiply the times V divided by V minus U, which is equal to 0 0.8 V. So this is equal to 0 0.5 F sub naught divided by V over 0.2 V, which is 5. And so this is going to be 2.5 times the fundamental frequency. So again, that's not going to give us something that will give us a resonance frequency. And finally, for the fourth answer, for D, we end up with U equals 0 0.5 and F sub S equals 1.5 times the fundamental frequency. Again, we plug that in here. So frequency observed is equal to 1.5 times the uh, fundamental frequency times V over V minus U, which is 0 0.5 V. That's a half of V, goes into V, that would be twice that, so that would be two times 1.5 times the fundamental frequency, or three times the fundamental frequency, which indeed is one of the possible options. So that one is a correct answer. And uh, that gives us two possibilities, A and D, B and C do not give us the fundamental frequency. Now, let's see here, because I just want to make sure that I got this correct on B. Let's see here, so I have two times the fundamental frequency at 0.8, that's five, yep, that works out. On C, that would be 0.5 times five, yep, so, yep, there we go. Two answers that are correct, two answers that are not correct, and that is the way you do this. How much uh, time do we take? <laughs> Eight and a half minutes. So now somehow you have to get this done in three minutes. Well, if you don't write down all this stuff, if you don't write down F observed and all this, you just plug it in and go with it. Right, right. You can cut some time off by just quickly plugging this thing in. But yeah, it does take some time to get through it. All right, that's number two.